stand to praise you, but I fall down on my knees. My spirit is so hungry, but my flesh is so weak. So light the fire in my soul, fan the flame. So light the fire in my heart again I feel your arms around me As a power of fear means Your spirit goes right through me Like a mighty rushing wind to light the fire in my soul and fan the flame make me whole cause Lord you know just where I've been so light the fire Dear saints, I greet you all in the precious name of Jesus Christ, both locally and abroad. May the Lord bless each and every one of you this morning. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful, Lord, that we can be living at this hour of time, Lord, and we can reach out to you, my God, that you are ever present, Lord, to hear our cries, my God. I pray for your people, dear God, gathered internationally, Lord, and locally, my God. You see the hearts, Lord. You see the many situations of life, dear God. I pray, dear Lord, that you will reach out your nail-pierced hands, Lord. Minister unto them, Lord. Touch those that are afflicted, my God. Those that have situations and problems of life, Lord. Father, you are prepared to meet their needs, Lord. I pray for your precious word this morning. Be the breaker of your word, dear God. Inspire this mind, my God. Let something be said, Lord, that shall be fruitful, my God, to the minds of your people. We ask these mercies. Now in the name of Jesus Christ, amen and amen. Amen. You can be seated this morning, brothers and sisters. We want to thank the Lord that we have this opportunity once again to be able to look to the Lord in his word. We are thankful that we can be living at this hour of time, that we realize that much is going on in the world and in the lives of children of God as well. This morning we have a message, uh, we're entitling it, uh, Keep Your Lights Burning. Keep Your Lights Burning. Uh, it's important to see the word there, keep your lights. And many times uh, we say keep your lamps burning, but we're looking at it, keep your lights burning. And uh, we're looking at the scripture that we will look down uh, further a little later but I'll just read it to you it says let your loins be girded about and your lights burning when the word of God says let your loins 
be girded about. We know the first emphasis is upon dressing. When it says, let your loins be girded, it gives us a picture, because it is actually an ancient picture. Uh, we say, be dressed up. It means that, be prepared, be dressed, be ready. Because uh, in the olden, ancient times, their mode of dressing was a little different to ours. Uh, and the word girded uh, means that you needed to be garmented and prepared. And in the same light, the word of God says, uh, and your lights burning. In other words, uh, you cannot be in a, a darkened position. You cannot be in a sleepy position. Uh, you cannot be in an unprepared situation. And when we look at that, and look at the backdrop of Christianity today, religious people, my brothers and sisters, uh, you begin to realize uh, people are in an unprepared state. If Jesus had to come today, God only knows how many individuals would be prepared the way the scripture tells us to be prepared. And yet, the message of preparation uh, has been propagated uh, for many, many generations now. And yet, man is in an unprepared state. We realize, brothers and sisters, especially over the last few years, there's been conditions that have come uh, into uh, Christianity, the religious uh, sphere, and uh, even the Bride of Jesus Christ uh, that has uh, allowed them to take a back seat. As much as psychologically and religiously, they can say the right words, we all can say the right words, but somehow are we uh, in the state that the scripture talks about uh, that we have to have our lines girded and our lights burning. What does that mean? How should it be that Jesus Christ uh, would be prepared to come uh, to take a bride away? Now, my brothers and sisters, uh, in relation to the conditions that have caused uh, the world to be where we are today and religious mankind today, we have to be able to at least uh, go back in time and uh, we will see how the conditions were amongst the Jewish people. My brothers and sisters, uh, we know how it was in Noah's days. We know how it was in Lot's days. And uh, we know how it is today. So uh, we're going to look this morning in the book of uh, Abak Cook. Uh, this was a minor prophet. And he, brothers and sisters, uh, prophesied and his ministry was around uh, browse and six, uh, about 650 years before the birth of Christ. And my brothers and sisters, uh, as he lived in that time, there were conditions, brothers and sisters, amongst uh, the people of Judah, the two southern tribes. And uh, the conditions were so bad that my brothers and sisters, and it seemed like, that all the wrongs and situations that were taking place, even God uh, seemed uh, to have uh, not looked upon it. That is how it looked uh, from uh, Abacook's uh, point of view. And uh, when you read the book, uh, it's a dialogue between uh, God and the prophet as he asks questions and God answers him. Now, my brothers and sisters, we have to understand that uh, conditions... Uh, down through time, have uh, been upon the face of the earth. But what the response of people were is important. And that is why we see in chapter 1, verses 2, Habakkuk is saying, O Lord, how long shall I cry? And thou will not hear. This is a prophet talking. Even cry out unto thee of violence, and thou will not save. Now, my brothers and sisters, keep that with the day we're living in. Look at what has happened uh, in the mines. Brothers and sisters, uh, the conditions are nearly every sector. Brothers and sisters, uh, you know, uh, a few years ago, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, 
many arms didn't have bagley guards and we have to start we putting bagley guards when we went to the united states and talked about bagley guards that was uh, i would say in the 80s they wanted what we were talking about because only prisons and normally have burglar guards and things like that and uh, brothers and sisters in that hour late 70s and 80s uh, they would state that uh, they left the car cars opened and the doors opened but here in the 80s uh, that is uh, what was happening and now uh, brothers and sisters in the 2020s uh, we see now we have to put fences because if we don't have fences our clothes are being uh, stolen and my brothers, we know the next stage uh, would become very violent. So we realize, brothers and sisters, in Habakkuk's hour, it was in a similar situation. No one was doing anything about it. And yet, uh, brothers and sisters, all of them were talking, uh, we are preparing for the Messiah. We're preparing for the coming of Jesus Christ. Uh, they didn't know it was Jesus, but they said the Messiah. But we see uh, Habakkuk uh, is beginning to cry to God and he says, uh, O Lord, how long shall I cry? And thou will not hear, even cry out unto thee of violence, and thou will not save. Brothers and sisters, Habakkuk lived around this period of time just uh, prior to the southern kingdoms going into Babylon for their 70 years of exile, some 650 years before the birth of Christ. The 10 northern tribes, because of what they had done, were taken into exile. But now Judah and Benjamin, brothers were living a short few years uh, before, imagine, the most important structure, the temple of God, was going to be destroyed. And my brothers and sisters, everyone was just going easy. They didn't know just around the bend Nebuchadnezzar was going to come, this Chaldean king, Babylonic king. And my brothers and sisters, so uh, we have to realize, brothers and sisters, we are living, uh, we know that Jesus is not coming next month uh, uh, in the sense prophetically for the church. He uh, may come for you, but brothers and sisters, uh, we realize that there are a few things to take place, uh, even as we heard the Pope uh, is saying that he may not travel as he used to travel before. And we know that Europe is wanting a man because they are seeing what Putin is doing. They say that the communistic lands have got spokesmen and people that can lead the people. And uh, you can see the way is being paved uh, for that man who can come uh, and even start talking to the world. So we know that in the, no in the next uh, maybe short few uh, months or a short space of time, uh, they will look for another pope. Brothers and sisters, but we can be rest assured that man that would come. And if he's the Antichrist, he's going to be a very outspoken man. When he speaks, the world is going to listen. So, brothers and sisters, uh, we have to understand that the way is being paved. But as we look just prior to the burning of the temple, brothers and sisters, in uh, Habakkuk's days, brothers and sisters, uh, he was crying to the Lord. Why dost thou show me iniquity? In other words, Every time he is crying and praying, the Lord is letting him <laughs> see the lawlessness that is taking place and cause me to behold grievance for spoiling and violence are before me and, the, and there are that raise up strife and contention. Look at the words, brothers and sisters, iniquity, grievance, spoiling, violence, strife, contention. Isn't that the order of the day? Brothers and sisters, uh, as a child of God uh, that may be seeking the Lord and, and going to church and praying, uh, but outside there, it's another lifestyle. And it seems like authorities, perhaps they're more interested in business and money, brothers and sisters uh, and all the rest, uh, then uh, ever trying to see uh, 
how the children uh, can be brought up uh, in a closed environment. Uh, brothers and sisters, teenagers uh, can be able to be guided in the right way. Uh, and uh, old people can be taken care of. Uh, no, brothers and sisters, that is not the issue of the day. There is too many conditions uh, that is now prevailing. And my brothers and sisters, they are taking uh, a pill, uh, a religious pill, my brothers, that is putting them to sleep because even the religious leaders uh, and uh, all the rest, uh, they are actually putting people to sleep. Brothers and sisters, uh, but Abacook uh, was interested, Lord, uh, why is all this before me? We know, brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ, when he came, he also, when he spoke in Matthew 24, he said, iniquity shall abound, lawlessness, it will abound, it, it means it, it won't just stop, the wicked shall grow more wickedly, and the love of many shall wax cold. Brothers and sisters, as we've said many times, don't expect this world to get any more warmer. It's going to get more hardened and cold. And it's only children of God that you will find a, a light burning in their hearts and in their minds. And the warmth of the love of God being expressed out of their lips and their hearts. Because, brothers and sisters, uh, we've got to realize this is a parallel to our day and our time. And my brothers and sisters, uh, he said, uh, Thou showest me iniquity. And because nothing is being done, it says, therefore the law is slackened. In other words, uh, even your judgment is not coming. That is why man, ungodly man, the law is slackened. And judgment doth never go forth. For the wicked doth compass about the righteous. Therefore wrong judgment proceeded. Brothers and sisters, uh, that is how it is today. It probably hasn't reached our door to that level, as I had said. But if you think of the days of Lot, when the two angels went into uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, brothers, uh, the people surrounded the house of Lot and said, uh, two men came here, send them out. Brothers and sisters, if this is the day of Lot, the days of Lot in Sodom and Gomorrah, then you can expect from burglar guards, Plus to fences, and the next thing, uh, you are going to become the targets. That is why it's God's grace, as Noah found grace in this hour. It's God's grace that is keeping us secure in this hour of time. It's not the burglar guards or the fences that we may put uh, from time to time, uh, but it is uh, your security in God. Brothers and sisters, uh, for we see right here it says uh, that the wicked doth compass about the righteous. Brothers and sisters, so uh, when the word of God says that them that live uh, righteous uh, shall be persecuted. Brothers and sisters, uh, even if you do not put yourself out there to be seen, the wicked of the world are looking and monitoring the lives of children of God. And if it's not the wicked, it's the devil himself that knows your number and your name. So we have to have our lights burning at this hour of time. And we have to be in a prepared, our armor has to be on, condition. Because in Abacook's days, brothers, he was praying. But we know that God had already seen the condition that was coming because we've got to realize prior to Abba Cook's days, there were other prophets, brothers and sisters prior to him, both minor and major, that had spoken. Brothers and sisters, uh, Hosea had spoken and said uh, how uh, conditions will be, brothers and sisters, as uh, the time came for them to go into exile. Isaiah had prophesied, even named the king that will come and deliver the children of Israel. So brothers and sisters, uh, we see that this was the prayer of Abacuc. But God begins to talk back to him and says, Behold, yea, amongst the heathen, 
and regard and wonder marvelously for I will work a work in your days which ye will not believe though it be told you. Brothers, to ever cook's prayer, this is God's word. He said, I'm going to do something in your time. Though it be told to you, you would not believe it. Now that verse of scripture, brothers and sisters, wasn't only for Abacook's days. Yes, they were anticipating the Messiah coming. And even when the days of Jesus came, brothers, God did a work. But did the Pharisees, the Sadducees, uh, the Zealots, they didn't believe the work that was being done. And that is why when Paul searched the scriptures, he picked up, even from Habakkuk's days, uh, and he told the religious people of that hour that God is going to do a work in your day, and you won't even believe it, when the gospel is going to be turned from the Jews to the Gentiles. Paul said to them, you're going to be shocked that God is going to leave the Jews and is going to go to the outcasts, which they turned as dogs. And you won't believe that. So God was saying to Habakkuk, you're going to be shocked that I'm going to allow the Chaldeans, the Nebuchadnezzar, to come, a ferocious na nation, and he's not going to destroy your home is going to burn the temple of God down. Solomon's temple, the temple where the presence of God is, is going to be demolished. And you're going to wonder, how could the great God of this universe allow something like that? Now my brothers and sisters, even in our day, Christian nations are going to wonder of some of the things that are going to happen. And they are wondering even right now, how can Russia be doing what he is doing and there seems to be no judgment at his door? Remember, God has spoken a long time ago. Brothers and sisters, how we will do things. Even in Habakkuk's days, it doesn't mean because Nebuchadnezzar was going to come and destroy the temple that uh, Nebuchadnezzar was not going to have his uh, days coming Brothers and sisters, God will deal with him and uh, Belshazzar as well. So brothers and sisters, we see uh, that God says uh, to the world and the heathens, Wonder marvelously, for I will work a work in your days, which they will not believe, though it be told you. Brothers and sisters, uh, look at the world today filled uh, with unbelief. Brothers and sisters, it's getting darker and darker. That is why let your lights be burning. Because there's so much of unbelief. The devil will not allow people to open the word of God. Uh, they want everything, brothers. Uh, nothing may be wrong with the, the technology of TikTok. Uh, but they want it in, tell it to me in two seconds, brother. They got no time to listen. Brothers, the gospel was not intended to be preached that way. You don't eat food that way. You don't go to a restaurant and say, wait, I make it sharp now. Brothers, you want to sit. You want your appetite to be right. You want whatever it goes. Uh, brothers and sisters, as uh, uh, a certain brother used to say, you know, get the starters and, uh, you know, the appetizers and things. So with God, it's not that way. If you're interested, you're going to stop. You're going to give God his respect. And you're going to say, Lord, feed me. Feed my hungry soul. But the world is not that way today. Religious man is not that way. It's already programmed. You go five minutes over, you got a problem. But brothers and sisters, uh, that is why God says, uh, you're gonna, he's going to work a work in your days. So, Ever cook, he starts to get the picture. He starts to realize he's been praying intensely. And God gave, didn't give him the answer he wants, but he realizes that God's got a plan. And so now he says, I will stand upon my watch. So instead of getting uh, 
brothers and sisters in a certain state of mind, he said, I will pick up and I will gird myself. I will stand upon my watch. In other words, uh, I will recognize my purpose in this Laodicean church age. And, uh, and I, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower. Because uh, I want to see what the Spirit of God is going to tell, tell me. Brothers and sisters, in this day and time, we got to know in what watch we are living in. We cannot be living in an outdated time span. Brothers and sisters, uh, Wesley and Luther, they would have loved to be in this hour, but they are in heaven. Even Brother Branham and Brother Jackson. But it's you, we that are alive and remain. We have to know what watch we are living in. Because God is going to supply to us meat in due season. And so ever cooked, though all these conditions were taking place, he said, I'm not going to go to sleep. I'm going to stand on my watch. I know what period I'm living in. I'm going to stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch, brothers and sisters, to see what he will say to me. Brothers, uh, is that the condition of Laodicean Christians? Brothers, the, re the religious world, are they standing upon their watch uh, and they're waiting to see what the Spirit will say for this time and this hour? He said, I will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved or corrected. Brothers, sir, uh, he was talking to the Lord and God talked to him and somewhat corrected him about what is coming. And therefore, he awakened spiritually and he said, no, I'm going to take my position. I'm going to realize what time it is. And I'm going to wait to see what God is going to say to me. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision. So this is the dialogue that is going on. And he says, now that you somewhat see what is in front of you, write the vision. It's important, brothers and sisters, that we should be written epistles, read of all men. If people ask us today, uh, you know, uh, why not you going in that current, in that, that line, in that way? God's vision has to be written upon us. People must read the vision of this hour of time. Because remember in this third watch, there is meat, there is a vision for this hour. Because the word of God says that where there is no vision, the people perish. They run wild. Brothers and sisters, so uh, we don't have it to be written like on a placard, but in our soul, our soul must be on fire for that vision and make it plain upon tables. No, this is not an hour of confusion to know whether we are living in Noah's hour or brothers and sisters uh, in uh, some other timepiece. We have to know uh, we are living in the ending of the two days. We have to know, uh, brothers and sisters, what that two-day period of time is. And we have to know for who it is. Because God will do a work that will flabbergast, will marvelously uh, make the world uh, realize they will wonder what is happening in this time. Because, brothers and sisters, uh, in order to be girded right, and having your lights burning, you have to be, uh, I would say, convinced in your heart what time you are living in. You cannot read it with denominational glasses. You cannot read it with an outdated glasses. You're going to read it with the glasses that God will give for this time. Because remember, brothers, the Spirit of God is able to synchronize our minds and make us realize what time we're living in. Because... If God could say to Habakkuk, read it right, get on that tower, get on that watch, and then make it plain, brothers and sisters, that he may run that read it. Brothers and sisters, 
Look at the gospel being preached today. Brothers and sisters, uh, no, the world uh, is moving in the opposite direction. He that, he that read it, it may run. He that, that reads it may become enthusiastic, alert, and be prepared. That's why the scripture said there, gird yourself. Because, brothers and sisters, uh, you can see. And uh, look at our custom the world has got on the 24th of February. When Russia went into Ukraine, the world were, everyone was asking questions. Brothers and sisters, what is this? Do you know when they were given an answer? Then the world has now gone to a calmness in another direction. But brothers and sisters, look at the conditions that are taking place there. As it's been documented, Russian soldiers, brothers and sisters, they're doing despicable things to Ukrainian prisoners. Brothers and sisters, things that you wouldn't want to hear and talk about. How thankful we should be that we are living in this hour with an opportunity to prepare. Because remember, what is happening there should have made the world realize. Nobody is being able to stop this man. He's allowed uh, grain to go out and then he bombs the harbor. And my brothers and sisters, uh, he see seemingly is having a free reign. Then in the far east, you got the communistic leaders. They are speaking to the United States and they're demanding certain things concerning Taiwan. Brothers and sisters, the United States of America was and is a Christian nation. But today, brothers and sisters, it seems like she's moving away from that central position because these nations are dictating the terms. So we have to realize, brothers, the vision has to be made plain. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. If the world has to say, we've listened to all of those uh, prophecies. We've listened to all that is recorded both uh, by Daniel and Hosea and Isaiah and Ezekiel and Jesus and John on the Isle of Patmos. They forget that in each dispensation of time, those visions or that portion of word is for an appointed specific time. And uh, it says, but at the end, the emphasis is on the word, the end. It shall speak. In other words, it will come alive. Brothers and sisters, the world read Ezekiel 36 and 37. They said, Israel will never be restored. But in 1948, Brothers and sisters, on the 14th of May, it became a nation. Brothers and sisters, uh, and we know what happened out of the pages of the word that dry bones begin to come alive. Similarly, we realize, brothers and sisters, this vision for each appointed time, at the end of the specific climatic period, it will speak, nothing will be able to stop it. God's word at the right time will be watered and come alive. And it says, uh, though it tarry, not tarry from the sense how God saw it, but how you have formulated. In other words, the Lord, as Habakkuk was saying, Lord, all of these things are happening and it seems like nothing is being done. God's word is not tearing. It is how we, in ourselves, become impatient at times and do not put all the pieces together and see no it is not yet a full picture the religious world as soon as they heard about Russia they said well this is Ezekiel 38 and 39 brothers and sisters uh, we know it is one step uh, brothers and sisters uh, away from that we know that there will be an era of the miraculous fast now the religious world, brothers and sisters, there may be one or two individuals out there, but the majority, brothers and sisters, uh, 
They know everything uh, from a theory point of view. They can tell you everything historically well enough, but they do not see, brothers and sisters, uh, how Israel is waiting. Brothers and sisters, you know what Iran is doing. They are preparing. They have all the fizzle, all the material for a nuclear bomb. Brothers and sisters, they can increase from 60% to 90% over a short period of time to have a nuclear wire. Brothers and sisters, that lets me know Israel is not realizing who can I trust. Brothers and sisters, uh, and when we see Biden and the way he is talking, we realize, brothers and sisters, the scripture does tell us in brothers and sisters, uh, Ezekiel uh, 63, or Isaiah 63, he said uh, that the Lord will come from Bozrah. His garments are dipped in blood. Coming from Jordan, the question is that, where have you come from? He says, I've just trodden down, brothers and sisters, the wine press in Edom, meaning Jordan. Brothers and sisters, the world doesn't realize Ukraine uh, will be a small picture when this era of the miraculous takes place and the Middle East is shaken, brothers, people will be asking the question, where are we in time? The Bible tells us, brothers and sisters, uh, at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though we tarry, wait for it. Because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Brothers and sisters, in this verse of scripture, we see that it says, that, uh, brothers and sisters, though it tarry, wait for it. This word is it here. But we'll see in a moment of time. Paul picks the same scripture and he changes or he uses the word, though he tarries, wait for him because it will surely come. In other words, he pointed it to the coming of Jesus Christ. So we see Habakkuk lived, brothers and sisters, approximately 600 and some odd years before the coming of Christ. And my brothers and sisters, they didn't realize they were going to go into exile. Jerusalem is going to be destroyed. And then Malachi will come and he will prophesy the conditions before the coming of Jesus Christ. When Jesus came, brothers, the religious world at that hour was in spiritual darkness. That is why, brothers, the man who was prophesied to come and the vision for that hour was on the scene. And my brothers and sisters, the religious world, the sectors of that time, brothers, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Zealots, the Essen Jews, they lived in the, in, in the caves, only copying the scriptures. They thought, well, no, God will show us who the Messiah is. Brothers, you can copy all the scriptures you want. It takes the Holy Spirit to pull out of the word and actually enlarge it to your spiritual mind so that it can be digested and become a revelation inside your heart that you can garment yourself and be a prepared individual for the coming of Christ. But when Jesus came... What happened? They took him and they crucified him. That is why, brothers and sisters, we see that there was an appointed time for that specific verse of scripture. For the word says, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end it shall speak. Brothers, man doesn't want to wait. Today's world, the world of microwaves, instantaneous cell phone push button systems that we live in. They cannot, though we tarry, wait for it. Because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Brothers, from the time of Adam and Eve, God had said the seed of the woman will bruise the serpent. The devil all the time wanted to cloud people's minds. That is why, brothers, when Jesus had come, we realize 
that Abba Kuk had said, Behold, his soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him. In other words, why did the people not accept Jesus Christ? It's their pride. It says the soul which is lifted up. In other words, you feel you know it all. You don't need somebody else to explain or allow the Spirit of God to show you the Word of God. Brothers and sisters, I've seen individuals down through time. I remember the time when we went to UVS. We took the precious word of God there. Brothers, sir, there were a certain individuals, they got excited. They saw this truth, the light caught on. But there were other individuals. Up to today, they're in existence. But their souls were lifted up. We don't need anyone to teach us. Leave it with us and we will come to know about it. Brothers, that is why we realize the Bible tells us the soul which is lifted up. And you can see that basically everywhere. Brothers and sisters, uh, you can be looked upon as a fool. But I would say Mary, she sat at the feet of Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, uh, a sister which we represent the churches of the world. They said, Jesus, would you not reprimand Mary? She uh, doesn't realize I've got to do all these things here in the kitchen. And Jesus took up for Mary, which symbolizes the bride of Christ, said, Martha, you are cumbered with many things. You are involved with many things. But Mary has received that which will be talked about through time. Brothers and sisters, uh, the important, she wanted to listen to what Jesus Christ had to say. Brothers and sisters, behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in himself. This is not the hour to allow pride, brothers and sisters, to make us feel, well, look at the denominational world. They looked at Brother Branham, sixth grade education. We can't accept what he has to say, but the word of God and the angel, brothers on the banks of the Ohio River said, this man's message will forerun. Brothers and sisters, the second coming of Jesus Christ. So we see, brothers and sisters, why is the masses of the world? It is their denominational pride and it can be some other pride. But the just shall live by faith. Those who are justified, who have, in other words, been made righteous through the blood of Jesus Christ, how are they going to become alive? And their souls are going to be littered? They are going to be justified by not emotional faith, but revelatory faith. In other words, uh, the word of God is going to be opened for your day. Your spiritual insight, eagle eyes, uh, will see that word and that revelation, inspiration is going to create a confidence and a faith inside of you. I know the watch that I live in. I know the time I live in. I know what is, is, is for our day. The just shall live by faith. will continue to move forward. But brothers and sisters, he whose heart is lifted up, the Bible says that it's not upright in him. So we see, Paul, he went back in the scriptures and he read what Abacook had written and prophesied. And the Hebrews, the Jewish people of his time, they were coming under severe persecution. And uh, they had recognized that Jesus was the Messiah. And so he tells them, cast not away, therefore your confidence. In other words, if you come, became revelated and understand the word of God, hold fast, cast not your confidence away. In other words, if you came to recognize the Lord, uh, maybe in the 60s or the 70s or 80s, 90s, whatever, it, whatever time it was, Cast not that confidence. Don't forget the day when Jesus came into you. And the blood cleansed you and washed you. 
and gave you the spirit to see further on where you in time. Cast not that confidence which hath great recompense of reward. In other words, as you build upon it, it is going to be what will give you the trophy at the end of this destination. Brothers and sisters, you saw Abacook, how he prayed to God because of the conditions. And because of the conditions that are today, we talk about it in, in our country or in our uh, city or town. Conditions may be difficult, maybe not for everyone, but brothers and sisters, there are individuals that are actually falling under the strain of it. And many times it makes it difficult and, and the devil can tell them, you know, if you was the bride, if you was a child of God, uh, you know, this won't happen, that won't happen. You, you know, uh, you'll have everything easy. Brothers and sisters, uh, we have to understand there's pressure coming from all sides. And somehow God will take care of his people. We have to be assured about that. But some of these things are also there for a set purpose and reason. Remember, God always prepares an ark before a flood. God, why did he have to squeeze the, the children of Israel in Egypt and allow Pharaoh to whip them? Because if not, they will say, Pharaoh, we don't want to move an inch from you. We don't care if we are called Egyptians or Israelites. We will stay here. This man, Joseph, he, he said, uh, don't leave my bones there, but don't worry about him. Therefore, God allowed pressure to come. Why? They will start to see God. And then God sent a, de a deliverer. The Jews in the 40s, they would want to remain in Europe. Be great business people. Build factories. We don't want to go to that arid land, Israel. And you know, he sent the hunters. And I have to say, brothers, if in this time the word of God says that we must gird up our loins, brothers and sisters, and have our lights burning, do you think that's going to happen without some pressure from the outside? Brothers, there will have to be that. So that children of God will not throw in the towel but they will cast not their confidence. They will recognize what it is for and they will strive to look to the Lord. For you have need of patience that after you have done the will of God, you might believe the promise. Brothers, look at the world today. Are they doing the will of God? The Bible says after you have done the will of God means the, the plan of God. Brothers and sisters, God has got a plan for this hour. Habakkuk's day, they were going to go into Babylon. Brothers and sisters, when Jesus came, uh, God was going to move the gospel from the Jews to the Gentiles. But after seven dispensations of time, we know God will send a messenger and he has done that. And we know, brothers and sisters, uh, there was not going to be just one watch, which we'll see in a moment of time. But there would be three watches. And we would know there would be two days. Gentile times would be coming to a close. Brothers and sisters, therefore, we have to do things according to the will of God. The world today, brothers, doesn't want to talk anything scriptural anymore. They don't want to see what is the plan of God. But yet God told Habakkuk, uh, he said, uh, make the vision plain. Write it upon tables that they may run, that read it. Brothers and sisters, after you've done the will of God, at the end of this destination, brothers, be it if Jesus has to come for you today or tomorrow, or he has to come for the church uh, in that appointed time, would we be able to say, we've run the race, we've done the will of the Lord. Brothers, you and I had the opportunity, when we were young, to go to the, the way the world was going, or to go the way God was calling us. 
We made a choice, a decision. Brothers and sisters, us, like Rebecca, she said, I will go. Esther had to make a decision. Brothers and sisters, uh, we see through all the scriptures that Ruth had to make a decision. They didn't just were pushed and went their way. They had to make some sacrifices. They made decisions and they knew they were in the will of God. That is how you receive that promise. And we see Paul is pulling the scripture from the book of Habakkuk. For yet a little while, I remember I said the word, it shall come in the book of Habakkuk. But Paul says, for yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. That word it is changed to he. Because brothers and sisters, uh, the prophecy that Paul was interested in or the revelation was about the Messiah. They were waiting for the E, the seed of the woman. And my brothers, no matter how long it takes, uh, in Paul's day, they knew the Messiah had come. But they were waiting now for the second coming of Christ. And 2,000 years has passed by and we are waiting. We are the generation that is waiting for the He, Jesus Christ. is not going to come visibly for us. He's going to come uh, mystically, brothers and sisters, to take us. And therefore, we see, he says, for a little while, and he that shall come. So, we have to realize that scripture moves to our time. And how would we know, yet a little while, unless we had a yardstick. That's what was given, brothers, uh, in uh, Hosea chapter 1 and verses 10 in that period of time, in that place, which means a period of time. Brothers, and Paul took that and he expounded it. It will be the time that God will be dealing with Gentiles. And we see this is Hebrews. Paul is pulling that same scripture from Habakkuk. And now, now the just shall live by faith. But Paul begins to expound and says, But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Brothers and sisters, uh, remember the day when Jesus came into your heart. Brothers, uh, in our days we were... We, we told our parents, uh, no, we're going, we're going to go to church. No, they came against us. But we didn't even listen, no, no matter what the boss had to say. But today, brothers, the kingdom of God in many people's lives are the last thing on the agenda. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Because the Bible says that, but if any man draw back, in other words, if he loses his enthusiasm, and he takes his hands off the plow. And that means uh, not saying, well, I want to be the greatest evangelist in the world. Uh, and I want to save the whole world. You have to know where you're living in time. It doesn't mean uh, grace is over and that souls cannot be saved. Uh, but you have to understand, uh, brothers, uh, where we are living in time. We'll see that in a moment of time. He says, if any man draw back, my soul, that is God, shall have no pleasure in him. In other words, God uh, is not going to look upon us with graciousness and a joy because he sees the enthusiasm being lost. But we, who are the we? Paul has died. He's, the churches through the seven church ages are gone. The we is us today. We are not of them that draw back unto perdition or be destroyed, <coughs> but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Brothers, we have to make a decision that we are not of the world, or the denominational class, or the religious class, or them that are living in the first watch or the second watch. We're living in the climaxing of the third watch, and we have set our heart's goal to finish this race. We will be garmented right and we will let our lights be burning. 
So we come to the scripture now. Let your loins be girded about. Brothers, after looking of all these scriptures in time, we are that element that at this hour, God is questioning. What are you garmented with? It's just, is it just a religious, traditional gar garment that will suit the world? Or is it a revelated white linen garment for the hour that you live in? That means you will be baptized right. You will recognize that there is one God. You will recognize you have to be filled with the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, and allow it to be able to use you for whatever He has called you in this hour of time. Brothers and sisters, uh, and you will not flatter down with the denominational world. Brothers and sisters, people today, they are, you know, uh, it's hard to recognize uh, how happy they are or see, brothers and sisters, with the religious world uh, out there and with brethren of like faith. Many times, brothers and sisters, uh, when they see an eagle, the Bible says, where the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered. Birds of a feather flock together. Brothers and sisters, uh, you have to be able to see for the back of your brother and sister. Because brothers and sisters, uh, they have a fire burning in their soul. It's the truth in their heart that makes you joyous. If not by now, brothers and sisters, uh, we, uh, like people love, let's see who's got the greatest amount of following. Who get the greatest amount of hits? Brothers, what does that matter in this life? Brothers and sisters, how many people do you know that have gone on? Because when you pass by, brothers and sisters, and when those doors open on the other side, I pray and hope you have some individuals that will be waiting on the other side. Here comes our brother from that Laodicean church age. What is he going to feed us? What is he going to update us with? Of what's happening down here on earth? You cannot be taking an outdated message to them. And my brothers and sisters, God, Jesus Christ is feeding his church with an updated message for this hour. He's not talking to the Pharisees and Sadducees uh, by the Holy Spirit to this time. He's talking to the Bride of Christ for this hour, the third watch. And he knows, brothers, uh, that the mercy seat, his intercession is going to be shortly over. He's going to become judge. Brothers and sisters, let your loins be gathered about. And your lights burning. Brothers and sisters, uh, remember this. It takes on a bigger, I would say, enlarging scope of understanding that if you light a fire, you don't go to sleep if you went to a campfire. You'll have somebody designated every so many hours to be able to put a log on that fire. Because you don't want to freeze, you don't want to die. Brothers, uh, the Holy Spirit has designated in each period of time to fire his church with a truth that will keep the fire burning in our hearts for this hour of time. That is why God knew there would be more than one watch to feed the carcass, the living word, the fresh word, not an outdated word. And that doesn't mean that Brother Branham's or Brother Jackson's words were outdated. They were continuous lights for the hour. So that you're living in this hour, you can be fresh. Now God keeps the other era of truths alive and fresh. He will have an appointed or appointed men at this hour. Every scribe will bring something to the bride of Christ for their designated time. Brother Branham was that initial scribe that fed this hour of time with great marvelous revelations oncoming. That was Brother Jackson. For 40 years, he was a scribe that revelated the children of God. Why? Because the children of God have to have the lights burning. They have to be gathered right in this hour of time. So we see the word of God says, let your 
Lawrence B. Gerrit about. You cannot at this hour of time be shabbily dressed, brothers and sisters, uh, for the soon coming of Christ. Keep your lamps burning. Brothers and sisters, this is the thought that is at this hour of time. And ye yourselves liken unto men that wait for the Lord when he will, I wanted to see this word, when he will return from the wedding. Well, brother, we thought we must wait for the Lord when he will return in the clouds of glory to take us home. Remember, that is not the formula or the process that Paul wrote in the book of Thessalonians. When he asked him, why are everybody dying? When is Jesus Christ coming? God gave him a revelation and said, the Lord himself shall come with a shout. Brothers and sisters, and it says that he will come following that with the voice of the archangel. And then at the final trump, the dead in Christ shall rise. Brothers and sisters, the word of God clearly says, the Lord in shall shall descend first with a shout. And we know, right here it says, when he shall return from the wedding. Brothers and sisters, before we are raptured, we have to be in a fit condition to be a bride. Because when he comes in the mystical coming of Christ, he's coming to catch his bride away. And therefore, from time to time, God knew, this is a parable, or this is writing, that God has spoken in Luke, that lets us and informs us, the Holy Spirit will return from that wedding preparation, what is being prepared by God in heaven, to inform us what is taking place uh, up there, update the bride of Christ, brothers and sisters, take a, a natural wedding, the bride always will want to know from individuals that are at the venue, is the decorations put in? Is the table set? Brothers and sisters, uh, is the floors all clean? Every now and then you're going to get an agent or somebody coming, updating the bride, don't worry. It is all getting ready. Doesn't the Bible say uh, the tables are prepared? There is preparation. And God says in his word that unto men that wait for the Lord, when he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Brothers and sisters, we realize this verse of scripture is not talking about when the Holy Spirit fiercely knocked on your door for salvation. There was a day when you were caught out in the world. And my brothers and sisters, you needed a savior. The Holy Spirit knocked so that you can invite the savior into your heart. But thereafter, when the Holy Spirit comes in, the Holy Spirit from time to time is going to knock with a verse of scripture to enlarge it to you, to show you where you are in time. And my brothers, the denominational world in the 1940s, they were in, brothers and sisters, a very sleepy condition. And God sent a messenger in that first watch to awaken Christendom and tell them the bridegroom is to come. And then in Matthew 25, verses 10 onwards, it says the bridegroom has come. But the world has thought that that meant Jesus is coming to catch us away in the rapture. But it meant the Holy Spirit is going to come to deliver to the bride, to them that were ready, something out of that carcass so that she can further revelate herself and prepare herself and garment herself so that, brothers, she can be girded right and her lights can be burning. So we see, it says that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Brothers and sisters, 
You know many times if somebody comes to your door unannounced and it is not all the time that you are dressed in preparation to, I would say, see a guest. No, you don't, that's not how you live your life. But you know when there's a knock on the door and if you are in a badly dressed situation, it's going to take a long time and the individual on the other side will automatically know you are not prepared. You are not dressed right. And that is why there's a great delay in answering the door. Brothers and sisters, that is why the religious world, they are not dressed right, we know. They are still in the dark ages truth, traditional truth. But brothers and sisters, that is why the scripture says, when he shall return from the wedding, and brothers and sisters, this time round is not knocking physically. The Holy Spirit is knocking at our heart's door. Not just for salvation. If you haven't found the Lord, he may knock at your door for salvation. But to the bride of Christ in this late hour, is knocking to show you where you're in time. Doesn't the Bible say where he is, there his servants will also be? That's where they will be in the scriptures. Brothers and sisters, sir. Uh, so we can be opening the door right. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you that he shall get himself. Imagine Jesus will get himself. If he gets himself, how we should be. The Bible says he shall get himself and make them to sit down to meet Brothers and sisters, we have to recognize that when Jesus came in the first watch, or in the second watch, or in the third watch, he is to deliver meat to those that have come into the kingdom of God and been Christians. And imagine, if you go sit at a table some way, and uh, you have ordered the menu, you're not seated there for just a glass of water or a cool drink. You cannot say you are seated there for meat. Brothers and sisters, in this hour of time, you read the verses that Jesus is knocking on the door that he may come and sup with us. Brothers and sisters, so Jesus when he comes and he sits down and he's gathered, what does the word get it mean? As I said prior to this, you can read the many scriptures. You can even read in Proverbs 31, where it talks about uh, that woman that the world uses, uh, or the scripture talks about many times. She girds herself to be able to do a work in a home. It means she gets ready. She dresses, she prepares herself. Brothers and sisters, and it says here, and shall get himself and make himself to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. And if he shall come in the second watch or in the third watch and find them so, blessed are those servants. So, brothers and sisters, in our hearts, we have to recognize why conditions are the way they are. And we have to recognize that the word of God says if he should come in the first watch or the second watch or the third watch. Brothers and sisters, we recognize that God in the first watch, he delivered, brothers and sisters, meat. This was the area of time 1948, God started a ministry. We had a messenger on the scene. And my brothers and sisters, Israel also started to become a nation. And we realized, brothers and sisters, that the world had felt, well, when Brother Branham came on the scene, he was Malachi 4-5. That was the end of everything. But when he went away, many of them, hundreds and even thousands, they never wanted to believe that there would be any kind of a ministry after Brother Branham. 
But we know for almost 40 years, God had servants. He had a servant with an apostolic ministry that brought wonderful truths that were still meat on the table. And my brothers and sisters, we are not living at the beginning of this third watch in 2005 when God took, I would say, Brother Raymond Jackson away. The third watch, brothers and sisters, began to be introduced. God had servants that begin to start answering questions that were in the minds of people because, firstly, the calculation was a question. Two days, has it ended or it hasn't ended? It's 2005, uh, uh, the ending of the two days, and God had to deal with that because he was not going to leave his bride with unanswered questions. And he would enlarge in further truths in the scriptures to show us that there was going to be more than one watch and more time to move on. That is why when Abacook didn't understand and then God spoke to him, then he said, Lord, I now understand, I now see, therefore I will stand on my watch and I will watch to see what you will say to me. And God said, take this which I've shown you Make the vision plain that those that see it may run. And brothers, it's up to you to have a self-examination. What is this picture doing to you? This is uh, the tablet that God's plan or vision for this hour that is written upon. That those that read it may become enthusiastic and watch and you will see whether there is such an enthusiasm in the hearts of individuals by their reaction and their actions. Brothers, you cannot be hungry and be just perched on a tree somewhere here when food is being outlaid. Jesus said he will get himself and he will set them down to meet. That's what God did to eaglets in this hour when in the first Thessalonians 4.16 uh, brothers the Lord himself shall descend with a shout. Why? He opened a carcass. Brothers and sisters there was a flying eagle anointing that carcass for little eaglets. And in that designated hour there was a ministry expanding, exposing the word of God. Because when that is over Brothers and sisters, Luke 19 will come on the scene where it will say, not this time when he shall return from the wedding. It says when he shall return after receiving the kingdom. It's one thing, returning from the wedding and disclosing to the bride what is going on in the preparatory hours in heaven. And it's another thing when he returns uh, after he received the kingdom. That means, brothers and sisters, intercession is over. Mercy seat is over. It doesn't mean it's over now, but it will be over by that time. And God has given him authority for the next age, the kingdom age. So that is what Revelation 19 is all about. That's the plan for this out of time. That's the carcass for this day and time. And so we see, brothers, following that, God will be cleaning his church so she can be ready. And God says, and this know, that if the good man of the house had known, so you have to know what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not suffered his house to be broken through. Brothers and sisters, we see here it says, what watch? That's Luke. Looking at the time, what watch, what hour. Brothers and sisters, it was important for God to clear man's mind, to know that the yardstick found in Hosea 1.10 has to be known into the minds of children of God. Brothers and sisters, they cannot sit just with what Brother Branham brought and say, well, the seven church ages, which is what a beautiful fundamental truth that God gave to us. It has to be added upon that brothers before Jesus Christ comes, there's going to be two wars. 
important was. Not just what the religious world is saying, and maybe they're getting all excited, which is fine, of what Putin is doing. You have to be enthusiastic because it's adding to the picture. But they forget. No, it's not just going to be Putin coming or whichever man coming on the mountains of Israel. Firstly, the world will feel we will want to exterminate Israel. We don't want to know about that people that call themselves Jews. And I'll tell you, Michael is no doubt waiting for that authority. He cannot go on his own. God will show him and God will tell him. It's time because you see what is being discussed behind the scenes. But brothers and sisters, the bride of Jesus Christ have already been alerted. Historical wise, this time factor Brothers and sisters, when you put it together, you know that two days will, I would say, not exactly, but approximately, end, I would say, end around 2027, 2028. It's of an approximate time factor. That is not to tell you Jesus is coming in 2028 or 2027. It's to give you a yardstick to put all these things that we know are in a different plan of God in its order and position and place. And should let you know, you have to go about your natural life, you have to work, you have to have food on your table, you have to pay your rent, you have to take care of your children and get other things done. But you cannot have it without a map in your mind because, brothers, the religious world doesn't want to talk anything about uh, a timepiece. You know why? They will not be able to talk about how they can build bigger churches, have more brothers and sisters programs. You know, since the COVID came, they couldn't talk about all that. They couldn't talk about evangelization. They couldn't talk about all of those things. But brothers and sisters, uh, now uh, they are exciting the individuals without any kind of uh, understanding of what is going on in this world. Brothers and sisters, children of God are not bigoted individuals that want to say, we know it all, we know not all the answers. Because then it will become very boring in life. God drops a measure of truth as it's needed for the children of God. And from 2005 to now, it's definitely given the bride of Christ more to feed upon that is exciting their hearts. That is why he's cleared that picture of the two days. They are confident of brothers and sisters that we are living in the climaxing, climaxing hour of time. This no. This is what Jesus said. That if the good man of the house, that church individual or that indiv individual also the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come. Abacook, after he had got an understanding, he said, I will stand on my watch. He said, if they knew in what watch the thief would come, what does that mean? Jesus is personified in a certain way as that thief that is coming to steal his bride away without the world knowing. That is coming mystically. But remember, before he comes for us, he is going to have three watches. In that final watch, he's going to explain uh, the yardstick, Hosea 110. He's going to tell us condition wise what's going to happen in Israel concerning the condition moral wise in this world. He's going to tell us how the great bear, Russia, what she's going to do. Also, brothers, it's going to tell us that America, brothers and sisters, will have to have a house cleaning. So what we see happening, brothers, with the turbulence in the East, as well as in the West and in Europe. Brothers and sisters, imagine in a short few weeks, Europe will be going into a winter without lights in many places. Brothers and sisters, first grade nations will have to buy, brothers and sisters, things to keep themselves warm. It should let us know 
God has said in his word a long time ago, brothers, them that persecuted Israel, God is going to take some of those things that Israel had went through in her days that she suffered. It's going to put it back. Brothers and sisters, uh, because God exactly knows it's these nations that don't want to still listen. They still want to poke Israel after they've gone through all of this. So somehow, God is going to show his favor to the nation of Israel. Brothers, amongst the bride of Christ, that ministry is going to see when that wars take place. Zion is coming together. They're going to sound that alarm. Reason being, brothers, that eagle has not gone to sleep. It was still anointed, that fivefold ministry, that designated men in the third watch. And my brothers, that is why Habakkuk or Luke said, Be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when you think not. Why, brothers, would the scripture be written that way? Brothers and sisters, man will start to go to sleep, but we have to understand that though, as Habakkuk said, although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall there be fruit in the vine, the labor of the olive shall fail, and the fields shall heal no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls. That may be the conditions in many places. Pictorially, it would be like this. But what did he say? Yet, I will rejoice, not in the silver and the gold, but I'll rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Brothers and sisters, uh, as we watch, we realize that conditions are now out in the world similar, similar to what Habakkuk looked at. Down through the pages, God adds specific scriptures for his people. Therefore, we're thankful at this time not to be just left, I would say, with what took place under the first watch or the second watch, we thank God from the bottom of our heart and God knows how thankful we have been and are still are of Brother Branham and his ministry. But we didn't stop at Malachi 4.5. Like Paul, he wrote about Ephesians 4.11, but he never seen the fulfillment of it. Like Brother Jackson, he would have wanted to be here and I know, brothers and sisters, how you would want to take Putin on and the rest of the characters and the actors at this time and show us what's on the table, the chess prophetic table for this time. But brothers, out in this world, the conditions may be like what I've read, but the Bible says, yet I will rejoice. Therefore, I can say, we can lift up our hands to the Lord even in this hour to thank the Lord. Brothers, we've lived almost now going into the second half of 2022. None of us, the older ones, may have thought we would have lived to this time, but we are thankful that scriptures moved us on. The carcass uh, fed us. The Spirit of God anointed His word, and there's a living ministry. Brothers, they're not scared to tell this world, God has opened up his word. And I will say, brothers, we cannot carry flavored things to suit the world, the masses. If that was the way, we would be either in the world or in the denomination. But brothers, we are eaglets feeding on the carcass of God's word. The Bible tells us, where there is no vision, the people will perish. But brothers, where there is a carcass that is expounding the word of God, there will be an excitement, an enthusiasm. And therefore, we are called in this hour, let your loins be gathered up, and brothers, your lights burning. That is what the Spirit of God will want us to be in this time. Shall we bow for a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, 
as we live at this hour of time, Lord, I pray for every child. Lord, they are people that you've called, Lord, from the masses of this world, so that they can walk on for you. Take these words, Lord, use it for your glory one way or the other. Bless your people now. And Lord, I pray that you will take the logs and the fuel of your word, place it on the fire that has been lit, and burn it bright in their hearts today. We ask these mercies in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you this morning. close to you Never let me go Cause I lay it all down again To hear you say that I'm my desire no one else will do cause nothing else can take your place to feel the warmth of your find a way to bring me back to you and you're all I want and you're Help me know you are near.